Hey guys, my name is Jason with S&J Forest Products, and on today's video, we're going to be making some uh, cedar tongue and groove siding for a sauna for a customer. And I'm going to be using this log right here for one of our logs, and I got to go find another one. He wants as much clear wood as he can get, and he wants seven foot boards. So right here, this log is uh, about 20 inches. The sap wood on it's kind of gone, but all the heartwood in it's going to be real good. So uh, this one's a little over seven feet, and it's pretty darn clear. Uh, let's take a look at the log here up close. So here's the end, and there's just a little rind of sapwood on it. And you can see it's kind of getting all wormy and rotten. Um, but the log on both sides is real sound. So as soon as we get in past that, that sapwood, it's going to be real nice, beautiful cedar. And you can see on the, on the trunk here, there's, there's no limbs, there's no knots. There's, it's, it should be really, really nice clear wood once we get into it. Unlike something like this, where you can see, you know, all the where the branches were and those knots, I'm sure go way, way down into the, into the log. So, um, this is one we're going to use, and uh, I got to go find another one. We need about 80 boards, and uh, I figure with this log and one more, we're going to be able to make it. And we're looking for uh, seven eighths thick, six inches wide, and seven to eight feet long. And then we'll get them cut, and we'll take them over to our guy that has the uh, the planer and the router and he's going to plane off one face for us and uh, do tongue and groove on the edge and to lock it together with this guy for his sauna. Well here's my absolute poor boy way of doing this. I need to get that log onto the back of that truck and I don't have an excavator. Actually the sad part is I do have an excavator but it's not down here. So I've taken uh, my eight foot choker, wrapped it around the small end and threw the blade there in a chain um, uh, and I've, <laughs> this is really a goofy way of doing it, but I just wrap the chain around itself. There's no hooks. And as the log takes the weight, it just compresses the chain together and holds it. Um, so I'm going to get, I'm going to lift up the blade, put that log on that plot bed. Hopefully let's see if it works. Got our two logs, we're headed up to the sawmill. All right, we're gonna get these unloaded and over to the mill. Beauty.
And there's our stack of seven eighths boards. Now we're going to rip them down into six inch wide pieces. All right, now we're going to use this big old resaw here to cut our boards down to size. So that's a single line rip saw from 1959. And in this video, I'm being the tail boy. <laughs>
And there's double ones too, right? There's double double edgers. And triple and quads. Okay. That's pretty cool. And there you go, beautiful pile of boards. Took us 15 minutes. And is that just a tool? It's just a tool steel or something, or is it? Is it? It's not carbide or anything. Not carbide teeth on it. No. Huh? What is the name? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Some fancy, fancy metal. Uh, according to the guy that I buy them from, uh, they're they're. Two different types of metal, and uh, it's a low tension blade. Huh? But they're only thirty-five bucks a piece. Uh, only, I guess. That's depending on how fast you use them and stuff. Huh? But these are the ones you like. You've tried different ones, and not that many. No. I tried the basic ones. They don't last very long at all. Uh huh. Huh. Yeah, these for the price, these work out. I can sharpen them eight, nine times.
So this one will do like a 28, 30 inch? No. If they're nice and round and you don't want a natural edge, you can do 38 inch. Okay. You slab off each side. Okay, we're ready to go again. Are we gonna get anything good out of this log, Fred? Some good firewood. Oh, yeah? Oh, we'll make it beautiful. Here's our second log. Get cut up into seven eighths by six inches by seven feet long. Well, here's our stack of boards from that second log. And they're not as great as the first one. I was hoping to get two at each one of these, but a lot of these have a little rot in the edge or a seam in the middle or something. So we'll probably end up getting about one, one by six at each one of these, but we'll see. Take them over to the resaw and see what we can make out of them. All right, we're in the garage, all stickered up, getting dried out. There's, I don't know, almost 80, 80 boards there. And we got our planer there and we're gonna make a little router table and tongue and groove all of them. Our boards have been in here for a couple weeks. Our moisture's down around 15% or so. And so we're gonna take our boards and our first thing is gonna be run them through this planer. Right now they're cut about seven eighths. We want to get them down to about three quarter. So we're going to see how many runs through there we got to do. And um, we're going to do, I don't know, 15 or 20 here for our first go and see how it works. All right, well, here's our finished product here. Turned out really nice. We ended up with the finish cut on it, and uh, it just took everything off real nice and made it nice and smooth. We did our first 22, 23 boards here, kind of figuring out the process with the planer. And uh, next, next phase is gonna be with the, the router table, and we're gonna come back and tongue and groove each side of this these boards, so. We'll check that out next. Just a homemade router table. 
uh, built with a four by three foot piece of MDO. Oh yeah, okay. Smooth surface MDO one sided and a fence made out of the same board with my little doohickey uh, um, dust like filter shot dust back thing. Shot back. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Goes down so your shot back. Captures maybe a quarter of it. The rest of it ends up down the bottom of the cabinet. But okay, <laughs> that's that was from yesterday, pretty much. Okay, uh, running one side of the uh, for the for the groove side. I'm cutting the tongue today. So this is the router's mounted under here. Yep. And there's your cutter. Yep. And you change the bits depending on if you want to do the tongue or the groove, right? Right. right. And this is the so that's this one cuts the groove. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So that makes that makes the indentation. Right. And, and this this cuts out and leaves the yeah, it cuts stuff. the chamfer on it. So yeah. It looks like this is a. I don't know if you can see the angle there. That's a. Oh yeah. Okay. So it leaves a chamfer on it. So when you butt them together. So anyway, if you don't have everything perfectly level, then you don't have a lip there. Oh, and, and there, it gives oh. you a nice finish uh, V there for you know. Um, yeah. Nicer, smoother transition. Yeah. So you don't have to have like the perfect lineup of the of the parts. Yeah, or sand the, you know, because there's some warpage maybe in the board or a little bit of twist or you know just. Little variation in thickness can, you know, change this, and so you'd have to be adjusting this constantly to get everyone perfect that way. So this kind of relieves having to do that. Right. And so there's the boards we're working on. You've yeah. got what f about half of them, about forty something of them planed. Forty five, yeah. And, and, gro and, and grooved. And yeah. grooved on one side. Yeah. And it, what's our moisture level about now? Do you know? We got our tool. <laughs> Yeah, it's it hasn't dropped much because the relative humidity is so high right now. It's been raining here for like weeks, yeah. So it depends on where you, you know, on the surface, on the ends. That's 15%. Okay, 15. And on the side, now these have been on the bottom, so that's about the same, 14 I, mean, you know, I can't get in there deep enough on that. Yeah, but somewhere around the 15%. Yeah. I mean, it's not like they're 40. They're not soaking wet or anything. Right. Well, this one's 60. That one's this 16. one's still at the bottom of the pile. And they've been, I mean, that one single fan's been on them for however long we've had them in here. Two weeks? Three gotcha. Weeks. So now we're getting them wrapped in bundles of 10. And we'll get them off to the customer. But that is how you make tongue and groove out of a cedar log. Okay, and here's a stack of 40 ready to deliver to the customer. So we'll get that off to them and we'll get our other 40 going and That'll make our 80 boards for this guy.